coming to you live from parts unknown. Here are two guys hanging out, chatting about life, crime, and passing time. One loves to wear his sunglasses inside. He's a connoisseur of tasteless thoughts and an avid fan of Dawson's Creek. Who isn't? And the other is a man who's always willing to one-up your story. He loves his lawn a little too much and has a closet full of white New Balance sneakers. Who doesn't? Here are Captain and Morgan. All right, welcome to the Captain and Morgan show. It's official. It's officially a show. It, it is? It might be official. What makes it official? I don't know. It's just officially it. I did see it on iTunes, so that made <laughs> oh, that made me uh, smile <laughs> in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy degrees outside and sixty-nine degrees in my pants. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being our friends. And we're probably going to take a trip back to the nineties, like we normally do. But I, from now on, I'm, I'm going to add a sound effect. I'm going oh. to go diddly, 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 when we decide to travel back in time. But not the, the, the Wayne's World, diddly, diddly, because we can't it's afford pretty, that. It's <laughs> pretty, right, right. We're going to have to do it ourselves. We could not get the royalties to play that. Yeah, diddly, diddly, diddly. Yeah, so what's up with you this week? Oh. <sighs> Not much, to tell you the truth. I mean, I think that's that's my life mostly. Uh, uh, my uh, my U eight girls soccer team is rolling along. U eight, yeah, under eight girls. Uh, how old is how old is your daughter now? She she will be six in November. I was going to say, I thought she was quite a ways away from eight. Yeah, she is. So it's basically. Six and seven year old, seven year olds. Uh, she's on the younger end of the uh, team just because right. she fall. She has that one of those end of the year birthdays, birthdays of yeah. course, so that she gets stuck in uh, with the older group, which I think is fine. I think it's good for her. Um, I'm loving coaching. It's been fun. Uh, the girls decided on a team name. Uh, we are our uniforms are orange, so when we um, the, you know. They said, okay, here's your uniforms. You guys get to pick the team name. And so, of course, we let the girls pick, and they picked uh, Pumpkin Spice as their team name. <laughs> Which shouldn't, doesn't really instill fear into, <laughs> into you or anyone. Everybody wants to eat them. <laughs> but they are on a roll. We're 4-0, oh, even oh, though man. we're not supposed to be keeping <laughs> score, quote-unquote. Well, then every team's 4-0 and oh if you're not keeping score. But we are legitimately 4-0. Oh. I like <laughs> Uh, what do you guys want to be called? Pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice. Yeah, and so like the other teams, their names are like the lizards and the the fireballs and the yeah. the panthers, and then here we are, pumpkin spice. I, I think I told you my my mother was a soccer coach for a while, and she has n- no clue about sports. And it was my little sister's team, and they would <laughs> they were called the fireballs, and they would always oh, go, yeah. uh, "Let's fire them up, fireballs." <laughs> And my mom would be like saying that like all day before the game, and it was very disturbing. And it, it made me realize why people sometimes kill their mothers. <laughs> it's no, actually, um, my mother would when she would wake us up when we're little, she would uh, sing that song, "Rise and shine and get out the glory, glory, rise and shine." Okay, yeah, I know that. No, oh, I... it was. You want to talk about torture? When somebody is clapping their hands and smiling and <sighs> whistling in the morning and six a.m. singing out of their ass. You want to? You want to go? Hey, lady! Hey, lady! Cool it! <laughs> Why don't you go get some pumpkin spice? That must be. It. That must be a teacher thing because my mom did the exact same thing, <laughs> and it was well the same song, but her her lyrics were were a little different. Um, but yeah, she would every morning she would wake. She'd us up. sing that stupid song. Yeah, she would sing "Rise and Shine" and see, but she would say "and give God." Yeah, yeah. Well, because yeah, there's the glory, glory. Yeah, yeah. There's like different verses. 
Oh, I didn't know that. I, I just got that verse. Yeah, but I think I think my mother only knew one one verse. So, <laughs> and then did okay. So since since now we figured out that our mothers woke us up to the same torturous song. Yeah. Praise be to God. We're not brothers, are we? <laughs> no. Okay. My mom would sing the same song too. I'm like, wait, wait. Why are we? Why are we related? <laughs> Are you my cousin? Um, no, that's kind of weird that you're, you're. Maybe it was like on a show or something that they saw, and they're like, "This is how I'm going to wake up my kids." I have no idea what I don't know what it's from. I, I'm sure someone out there knows what that where that song is from. It's such a generic song, too. I've heard it on The Simpsons. I've heard oh, Ned really? Flanders sing it. Yeah, <laughs> and then I was like, "Yeah, mom." I'm going to ask my mom why the hell she did that. I know my mom did not get it from The Simpsons. My mom was not a Simpsons fan. No, I mean, this was like a newer Simpsons. So, oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, no, we weren't even allowed to watch The Simpsons. I think for like the first couple weeks, because there was like some reports, mm-hmm. like, oh, The Simpsons, they're they're bad. Everything's bad for you. I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons, and I wasn't allowed to watch uh, In Living Color. Okay. But I was allowed to watch Saturday Night Live, so I figured that one out. Um, and I wasn't allowed to watch Pretty Woman. <laughs> Very specific. I was not allowed to watch MTV, um, so which stunted my my That's knowledge of music. You yeah. know, from I think I can actually remember the exact moment when MTV got banned from that, from our house. <laughs> I can. I was like, I was either eight or nine. Um, you know, I, I came from a large family, so I was uh, the fourth of five kids, and so of course my older siblings, my my older brother was seven years older than me. So if I was, let's say I was eight, he would have been fifteen. Let's say he was fifteen, sixteen. Right. So of course, at, at that age, you're definitely into music. Um, and so you mean he is? He is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wasn't so much at that age. Right. But of course, you when when you have older siblings, you kind of, you kind of follow them a little bit. Yeah. Um, but he was really into like metal. He liked Metallica. He liked Guns N' Roses. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember, so once again, my mom was a teacher, so we would, we would go home for after school and there would be, you know, a good one to two hours that we were home, home, quote unquote, home alone. And so they would generally put on MTV and watch it. And I don't know if they would turn it off before she got home or what, but but on this particular day, we're all kind of in front of the TV, and it was um, Def Leppard pour some sugar on me. The video was on. Yeah, which is a pretty sexual video. Yeah. Yeah. And the song, of course, pour some sugar mm-hmm. on me is probably, you know, is. What does it mean? I, well, uh, my mom. Cocaine. Yeah, my mom. Yeah. My mom was convinced it was it was a reference to cocaine. Yeah, or jizz on my pants. <laughs> what? One or mm. two. But uh, she walked in and that was on, and she flipped out and like, you know, took the remote or whatever and like threw it across the room and I don't mm. want this crap on my TV or whatever she said and uh and of course being eight years old and seeing your mom who at that at that point she was like perfect she was like an angel but to see her flip out like that uh-huh. scared the hell out of me so it's like <laughs> okay definitely not watching MTV again like MTV must be really bad yeah so so did you have so did you have cable but you weren't allowed to watch MTV yeah it was one of the things that if my mom was home MTV was not on TV right but I think with me, because anyways, I, I wasn't really into music at that time, being mm-hmm. eight, nine, whatever. So it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, it might have been on in the background at some point, but I never really, I never paid attention to it. Right. Um, I would, you know, I was, and then the other thing is I've, I was rarely home. I was always outside playing or whatever. Um, but yeah, from, from that moment, let's say it was 88 until probably, I mean, this is how bad it was, right? So Nirvana came out there. Their Nevermind album came out what, like in ninety one, ninety two. Yeah, ninety one. Um, so my mom had like a really close friend who lived up in um north of Columbus in in a, a rural county, um, Knox County, and lived on a farm. And so 
she would go up and visit, a, you know, a few times a year, and she would always take take me and well the younger kids because we liked going to hang out on a farm because you know we're city kids and we don't get to see like sheep or goats that often right so you don't we were... get to make out with sheep or goats <laughs> very often no no so this is our moment so <laughs> <laughs> but we go up and um, miss elizabeth we go up and her friends had her friend has a son who's probably like my brother's age maybe a little bit younger um but I was inside. They were somewhere else. I saw a um, VHS tape, and it was labeled music videos on it. And so I put it in just to kind of see what it was. And the first song that was on there was the music video for Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. And I watched it. And while I was, like, blown away, like, whoa, what is this? Because up until that point, my my knowledge of music or the what I heard on music was whatever my parents were listening to. So it was Sunny 95. It was... A lot of Elton John. Elton John. There's a lot Billy of Joel. A lot of music from the '60s, stuff like that. Um, and so I see this, and it's completely different from what I'm used to. Christopher Cross. <laughs> Chris, <yeah>. Sailing <laughs> takes me away. Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald. Uh, you know stuff like that. <laughs> the Doobie Brothers. The Doobie Brothers. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, so, I, so I watched it, and I was like, "This is amazing." But at the same time, I was freaked out that she was going to catch me watching it. It was like I, I felt like I was like watching my first porno, and I didn't yeah. want to get caught. So I, as soon as the video was done, I stopped it, and I rewound it. Yeah, that's that's the old VHS porno move. Yeah, so that like, they won't know that I watched it. Right, because once they put it in, it's back to the beginning. I'm like, how could it be at the beginning if I watched it? I didn't watch this. What are you talking about? Hey, Nirvana. No way I watched this. It smells like what? I don't know that yeah. song. Tell, smells like teen sheep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Mom? <laughs> ha ha hell. <laughs> I asked you first. <laughs> it was probably another year or two after that that I actually got my, like, went and bought my first, like, album. Well, what was so cool is I think it was Channel 49, and I could be wrong, but I want to say that MTV was, like, Channel 49. Channel 48 was um, VH1. VHS. Oh, yeah, VHS, VH1, VHS. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was 49 MTV, 48 VH1, 47 was like CMT or something like that. Yep. And then like, um, and then channel 50 would have been BET. And so I think we talked about this before. When when I'd be waiting for the bus or or if somebody's going to pick, uh, drive us to school, it was we would have it on MTV, but if it was if Celine Dion or somebody came on, then we're going to switch it over to VH1, and what could be on there? And if that sucked, then maybe we'd go to CMT, and if that sucked, we'd go to BET to see what was on there. I feel like at that time though, CMT was mostly like hee haw. Yeah, I I remember it like being like Reba McIntyre. Was it CMT though back then, or was it, I th- or was it something else, or was it like what was I, it TNN, uh, or that that I think that was another channel, but yeah, I, I want to say it was CMT, but I remember like because like sometimes I'd play like a Garth Brooks song, and like mm-hmm. Garth Brooks was really big back in the day. Well, yeah, because he kind of crossed over to the mainstream a little bit. Yeah, so they would play some of his videos on MTV or VH1. Yeah. And so sometimes you catch that, and uh, there was a. Uh, I gotta look it up because I can't remember. It's it's Reba McIntyre song, and it's um. It's like all her songs. She was kind of like the Celine Dion of country music. So who in your family was the big country? Nobody. Nobody. It, but it was we, just one of the things that you just turned it on. No, we want it, but we'd never turn it to that channel. It was just that was a a substation, basically. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, let's see what else is on. But she had a song. Reba. She had a song. A song that was. I. I, uh, I wish I knew what it was called. Here we go. Um, she has a bunch of popular songs. I. Uh, I know this is going to sound bad. I can't name one of them. Yeah, well, it's pretty bad that the one that I liked, um, 
that when it would come on, I'd be like, this song. It was one of those things where, because I was young, so it was one of those songs where it's like, this song, uh, the song is called Fancy. Okay. And I think the girl's name was Fancy. And <laughs> I can't, ex- I just remember going, this is so strange. But it w- remember that song, um, uh, Water Total Girl. Eclipse of the Heart? Yes. It was like a really weird music video. <laughs> but I would just yeah. like watch it because I'd just be like, this is strange. And same with um, Meatloaf. Um, uh, I will. I would do anything for love, but yeah. I won't do that. I feel like any Linux. Um, oh, uh, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. That that would fall in that ca- category. Yeah, you, there was just some videos that you'd watch and you'd be like, "This is strange." Anything that Tori Amos did. Yeah, yeah. Because I always thought Tori Amos was like a vampire. <laughs> I was convinced. Like, <laughs> why? Why is she? And it wasn't that I thought that she was actually a vampire, but I, I thought like that's the look that she was going for. The red hair vampire. And I was like, why why did she think this is like cool? It it was just nineties. Yeah. It's just very strange. Yeah, so so every now and then fancy would come on and then I have to act like I didn't like the song. But you did. But yeah, so that that's my question to you. Um was there like a song at any point that you were just like, I like this song, but I know people might make fun of me about this song. Uh, I mean, you had yeah. a, a pretty big age gap. Yeah. So like when you're like 12, like your brother's out of the house. Well, yeah, he was out of the house. And so, yeah, but yeah, he was gone. It, so... I didn't really get into into his music, um, so f- okay, let me go. Let me get. I'll get back. I'll get to your question. But yeah, so the, the there was that the difference in age, and I remember uh, when he left, he he went into the army after high school, after graduating, and of course, you know, being the younger brother, um, as the first chance I got, I went in like snoop through his stuff, yeah, to see you know, let's find out what he has and see what I can take. And I remember he had like Metallica t-shirts and Metallica like albums, and I thought he was a Satan, Satan Satanist <laughs> because you know there's all these like you know snakes and stuff. And yeah, because like, your mom's going rise and shine and give out exactly. the glory, glory. Yeah, so it's like so I didn't really get into that. Um, there are a lot of songs that I uh, that I liked, but I don't think. I can't think think of anything where it's like I kind of like I had to hide it. Like I'm in I'm a closet, you know, um, in a Kimoni fan. I don't even know who that. Is. Yeah, you do. Here comes the hot stepper. Oh yeah, here comes the hot stepper. <laughs> Wear them up. I'm the li- lyrical gangster. Wear them up. Well, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, the difference between you know my little brother is like three years, so I never really cared what he thought of what I was listening, but. Older brother being like a year and a half. Uh-huh. And I never really cared what my parents thought. Yeah. You know what? I I, I really think that it, like the songs that, that I would, that I liked, but I never said I liked would be those songs that you would associate with, um, like, like the, the teen heartthrob type, type, you know, songs or, um, songs that, you, that, that, you would typically say, "Oh, a teen girl would like." Right, like what? Um, so I see. I I actually did like In Sync. Yeah. Um, I never, you know, I probably made fun of it. Like bye bye bye. You like? Yeah, the, the, I was I was bye, team In Sync. I did not like Backstreet Boys. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know we talked about this. We need to start doing weekly polls, by the way. So on our Instagram. And our handle is oh shit <laughs> <laughs> the captain and Morgan the captain and Morgan on Instagram we'll do a poll this week in sync or the Backstreet Boys I'm betting money that the that the in sinkers win you know what I bet you I do you think there's gonna be we're not gonna ask age but I I feel like the people that were Backstreet Boys are typically older. Yeah, because they came out a little bit earlier. Yeah. 
and so, and but, then but NSYNC the, it, lasted a little, uh, we'll say longer. Yeah, popularity wise. But also, I think because Justin Tim- Timberlake took uh, off, yeah, that that I think sometimes people associate, you know, just I mean, obviously he was in that group, mm-hmm. but I think sometimes people go, okay, well, I also like Justin Timberlake, so NSYNC wins, yeah, that battle. So jumping back to your question, I think a lot a lot of it is there. There are more songs that I that I have learned that I liked like now as I'm older than, than what I liked when I was, when they actually first came out. Right. So, so last week when I came over to record the show, I was blaring Madonna cherish. Yes. Which is a, it's, it is, it's a, it's one, it's a good song, but it's not like one of her top songs. I would say it was back when she was still singing. I mean, she was actually like, and I, and when I say that, people go, "What? She still sings now?" Like, no, like back in the '80s, she was actually like singing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Madonna always freaks me out now because of Luca McNada <laughs> or Puka, not Hada, like I like to call them. So you associate Luca with Madonna now? Well, there's that song. Uh, now I got to figure it out. It's a it's a Madonna song, and it was from a movie. Madonna, this is this is me, googling. <laughs> um, it's a Madonna song. It's from a movie. Evita. It wasn't Evita. Dick Tracy. No, it wasn't. Uh, was she even in that movie? Yes, she was in Dick Tracy. I, I can't remember who she uh, played. She was a love interest. Okay. Of uh of uh. Ned Beatty. She, she was cute in uh, Papa Don't Preach, and she was mm-hmm. she was cute in uh, like a like a prayer. Yeah, Life is a mystery. yeah. Uh-huh. So that yeah, because and then Cherish was off that uh, like a prayer album. Yeah, and she's Bo- really cute in that video. Borderline was a good one. Uh, that's very eighties. If you like, um. I, I think the song is called Live to Tell. And it was from a movie called True Blue, 1986. But it's like, and, and I might have mentioned this on the show before, but it's my favorite music I've ever to date that I've done on the show on, on True Crime Garage. Luca. Yeah, because he was listening to Live to Tell why he was doing one of these little video blogs he was doing. Yeah. And it was in the background and, and it kind of has a creepy sound to it. So the fact that he was like blogging and you know how weird he is and you know, all the sick stuff he's done Mm -hmm. that here in this Madonna song, I was like, I need to take the essence of this song and, and make that the trailer. Yeah. Cause I always try to have the trailer music like connect in some way. And I ended up taking a similar chord progression and slowing it down, but I could still hear it. I could hear the essence. And so now when I listen back to it, I'm like, it's, it's creepy on a different level to me, but that's cause I know, you know, like, you know, Luca plus Madonna equals extra creepy. So yeah, live to tell. Is it's a great song too. I don't think I know it. It it wasn't that popular, and and if you watch the video, it's a lot of scenes from. I think she's in the movie. I'm not for sure. Um, I wasn't a huge Madonna fan, but I did mm-hmm. work for a guy that had a like a poster of Madonna that he would always hold up, and he would just say, "How gorgeous is she." <laughs> He always had the poster at ready. No, it was like behind the desk. So when we'd be talking about celebrities that we had like crushes on, her, he would always just grab this poster and <laughs> and it was the best picture ever of Madonna because it was like it was a picture where she looked gorgeous but yeah. also sexy, and so it, you just could not argue when he held it up. Like, come on. Madonna's not in the top five or whatever, and you'd just be like, "Yeah, she is." Yeah, you win, even though you're like, "That was one picture." 
from mm-hmm. how many years ago? Yeah. Oh yeah, from you know from the eighties. So I I don't know how I feel about and. I guess this is somewhat political, but I don't know how I feel about celebrities in general being political. Yeah. Because there's a part of me that goes, well, some people, that's how they get some of their information. Mm -hmm. And then other people, I'm like, but should they be getting their information from celebrities? I mean, a lot of these people are multimillionaires. Yeah. They they can't have the, the same feelings and thoughts that we have. You know, for the most part, um, I understand. I I know what you're saying. So they're using their celebrity to, yeah, and I think to get th- to get their opinion or you know to get their put their spin on it or whatever. I don't want to yeah. say spin. There's a lot of things I love about Madonna, m- not so much her music, but mm-hmm. I you know, and, and I don't think we've ever talked about this, but like I'm a huge like huge. Trent Reznor fan now. Yeah, I've watched all these and and a lot more Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, which is his writing partner that has done uh, like documentaries like Vietnam and and they did uh, Girl with a Dragon Tattoo and a million other movies. Like mm, yeah, they have become a staple as far as scoring films, and they did probably one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard, which is um, a Social Network. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And um it's just amazing. And and what's so cool, I I like to get a couple themes from different music uh from different movies and I like to put them on a and, and the ones that don't have words. So it's just an instrumental theme and I like to put them on a playlist. And so if you're driving around and in the car with your buddy, you can kind of have it up a little bit. Yeah. And it kind of controls the mood of the situation. Or if you're just driving, like if I'm driving to gig, to a gig by myself, I don't want to listen to talk radio. I don't want to listen to a podcast. I don't want to listen to music, you know, or like sing along with something. I'll put on these themes. And it's so cool because as you're looking around, it's almost like it's now becoming the theme to what you're seeing. Yeah. And um, so Trent Reznor is huge. But back in the day, like I wasn't big into Nine Inch Nails. And I think maybe that's because there was a lot of kids that were into the gothic thing, which I thought was cool. But it was the fact that they didn't understand that was as much of a uniform as the kid wearing Abercrombie and Fitch. Yeah. And it was like, if you don't dress goth enough, then you can't like Nine Inch Nails as much as me. (laughs) Yeah. Even though you're like, I learned guitar parts and bass parts from them. Um, and like Manson, when he came out, you know, speaking of uh, Annie Lennox, when he came out with Sweet Dreams, that is one of the most shocking videos I've ever seen in my life. And that's definitely a video, like if I was watching it and my father came into the room, I'm turning the channel. Yeah. Because I don't want him to be like, you... Son, use a freak. Use a freak, boy. Uh, but I remember like being super fascinated by that video because, mm-hmm. and, and and the point I'm trying to get to. Okay, two points I'm trying to get to is that type of rock star. Axl Rose was that way too. Any publicity is good publicity. Madonna was that but the female queen of that stuff. And yes, she she was pop music. And that's what made it so much more interesting. She wasn't playing like tech, you know, uh industrial music or rock and roll. She was doing pop songs and still able to push the boundaries of like she would do something like the like the per, like a prayer video, mm-hmm. you know, she kisses the black Jesus. Yeah, and it becomes like this big controversial thing. She was just so good at that, and I I think that should be applauded. Now, that being said, I think in her older years, she is still trying to do that, mm-hmm. and I think music for the most part is a young 
man or woman's game. Yes. And so, yeah. So I don't think she's doing it so well, but I always thought she was fascinated. But when I watched the four part documentary on uh, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine on HBO, Mm -hmm. uh, what's that documentary called? Um, I know you're talking about, but I, I, Dr. Dre. I can't think of the name right now. Documentary. <laughs> like This is awful. This shows <laughs> you how old I am. Uh, the Defiant Ones. And supposedly it's just season one of The Defiant Ones, so I don't know what they're going to get into next. Yeah. But to learn more about Death Row Records and their connection to Interscope and just like fascinating things like... Gerardo, remember, remember Gerardo? Oh yeah, um, Rico Suave. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That song basically paid for Death Row Records. Whoa! Like if it was, if that song wasn't a hit, we'd have no Interscope Records, Ugh. which then we'd have no Death Row Records. That is insane. But there's a section because Interscope signed Trent Reznor, and then they also signed Marilyn Manson. But there was a section where they're talking about those two guys. And it's so funny that when they were popular, I just, like I said, I think it was because of the kids at our school that listened to them. And it was like, if you're not gothic enough, then you you have no right to listen to Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> but since then, I have, I have a huge fascination with both those bands. Um, their songs, uh, the meaning of the songs, also just like, the the textures they use other than just guitars mm-hmm. i find it very fascinating um but yeah as we're talking about madonna for some reason i always kind of class her in that same you know madonna marilyn manson trent reznor um i'm thinking axel rose i'm just trying to think of these like larger than life characters that kind of push the envelope and push controversy yeah so I, I don't. Where are we going with? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we've kind of we've, we've been uh, around a little bit with this music. So okay. So you liked In Sync. So I liked In Sync. Okay. Um, remind me, because because you mentioned um, Madonna along with Luca. This would be interesting to talk about um, maybe on another show. If there's any other songs that you associate uh, with bad moments or if there are any songs that have been ruined because of you know a moment in your life well it's weird because th- that song's not ruined by him mm-hmm. it actually makes that song better in some ways because the eeriness of it yeah um but but I also I always associate psycho killer by the talking heads obviously yeah. with uh son of sam oh, psycho yeah. killer Run, 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 run away. Again, that's a song like when I was a kid. What? This is stupid. <laughs> but as an adult, I, I have gravitated towards those things yeah. and, and are fascinated by them. I'm fascinated by a lot of the talking head yeah. stuff. Um, so I have a really random one. Okay, so this is a song that was ruined by something or, in your life. I don't know if it was ruined, but it always brings up a certain memory. Mm-hmm. So, oh, it was actually it occurred on your birthday. It was uh, April 20th, uh, 1994, I'm going to say. The uh, Oklahoma City bombing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the day of the bombing, uh, I was listening to one of my sister's cassette tapes like uh it was like a mix Mm -hmm. and it was actually a pretty pretty damn good cassette i know that there was like king missile that was on it 95 was it 95 okay 95 it was actually the morning of (laughs) april 19th i was close yeah that was a year day yep um but that was on so i was listening to this to her um to her cassette, and on that cassette, besides King Missile, was uh, they might be giants. Yeah, and it was Birdhouse in Your Soul. Yeah, and so great song. It was the first time I had ever heard that song, and I loved it. 
And I kept playing it over and over and over and over and over. And so while I was playing it, you know, the Oklahoma City news coverage was on TV. So now every time I, I think of that song or I hear that song, I automatically like think about Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah. And which is because I just, you know, not, I wasn't trying to be a one upper. <laughs> I was just trying to, you said 1994? I said 94? Yeah, like a question. And I was like, well, let me just look it up. No, so, I know you're not a one upper. But but by looking at those, these pictures, mm-hmm. wow. You don't remember how bad it was? I. Because you. So, okay, see, the whole thing is this is one, you know, people talk about Oklahoma City bombing. Yep. Waco, Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, Columbine. Yep. Many others. Hitler's birthday. Yep. Now, a lot of people associate these with April 20th or 420. It's actually the week of April 20th. Oh, okay. And so it's like, like you said, the 19th. You know, this happened on the 19th. I think yeah. Waco was the 20th or 21st. Columbine was on the 20th. And really, Columbine was supposed to be on the 19th because they were going to do it in like honor of Timothy McVeigh. Yeah. But for whatever reason that didn't happen, but it's like, I just, I haven't looked at pictures of this lately and to see how I, destroyed it, it was. It's brutal. The building was completely destroyed. I mean, you had the back, the sides and the back was left. Yeah. And, what what's absolutely terrible is where I mean, it, I mean in the end I don't think it would have really mattered. But where he parked that that uh, that rider truck right was basically right below the the daycare center. Yeah, which was on if I'm not mistaken it was on like the second floor. Yeah, and they're showing a <laughs> picture which was a pretty famous picture. It was a firefighter carrying a baby and the yeah. baby's face is bloody and i i mean besides birdhouse and your soul i i remember what i was doing or i the the night before in the day because the night before that must have been um it must have been spring break it must have been love but it's, but it's over now, now. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh must have been spring break because i was uh staying the night at my friend Jason's house. Yeah. And this brings up another memory because I was making gonna, out, making out. No, no. Um, I was going to, I was going to mention this to, to you earlier. So it's, it's weird how, especially back in, back in the nineties, back in 95, <laughs> um, how, how cable, cable companies worked. So we were, in, we were basically, both of us grew up on the South side of Columbus, South of downtown. Yeah. So I think at that time we had just Time Warner or whatever, Warner Cable. Um, I, and I can't remember what he had, but what he had. So he lived on the north side. So he had a completely different cable system. And it might have been Time Warner, but they called it something else. <laughs> yeah. But I remember specifically because when I would go up there and stay the night with them, he had a channel um, on his cable called Jukebox, which was a channel where – you would call like a 900 number to request a song and then at some point they would play it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That would be, that would have been fun. Back in the day, that would have been, that was kind of a thing. Even like uh, if you had a slumber party with friends, you might call a radio station and be like, hey, can you play such and such? I, I, I bet they, do they even get calls anymore? Oh. Because nobody wants to answer the phone anymore. Well, I'm sure you, you can just go and like, Text uh, request or something right. like that, or but that's not as much fun as going. Hey, no. can you play? Can you play? Uh, can you play? Lisa? Ace of Base. Yeah, I saw a sign. <laughs> yeah, and I opened up my eyes. I saw a sign. And I remember we actually requested. We probably requested a lot of songs that night, and we probably spent a shit ton of his parents' money. But we requested um, Sir Mix a lot, not Baby Got Back. Mm-hmm. We requested Put Him on the Glass. Yeah, which was another good song. He didn't get enough credit for "Put Him on the Glass," and it was a very, very raunchy video. <laughs> and we were doing it. For, we were doing it for the video. It's kind of a shitty song to be requesting after a uh, a bombing. Oh, this was pre-bombing. Uh, okay, so this would have been the night of the eighteenth. Okay, the night before the bombing. Yeah, 
put them on the grass. On the grass. So we did that, and then uh, the next day was the bombing, and I listened to Birdhouse, Birdhouse in Your Soul, and I don't want to get life has changed. I don't want to get too deep, but it seems as if <laughs> you know, like, like just even like when you when I think about like the Trent Reznor thing and and Marilyn Manson and the gothic scene, it's like, and I'm not talking about like gothics, and I'm not saying that. Because when I think about the bombing and the more I've learned about Timothy McVeigh and mm-hmm. and this like Nazi propaganda, I mean, because that's pretty much what it was. I mean, I, I think they want to call him like a white supremacist. Yeah, yeah. But which is true. But I also think it's like I think there was a bunch of Nazi references, and I do think there's. But I think it's. You know, it, it, a lot of this stuff stems, I think, from loneliness, and I think the these suicide bombers and shooters and all this stuff. I mean, there's there's a, a epidemic, and I, I don't think it's just mental illness. I mean, I think it's irresponsible to go, okay, well, Timothy McVeigh, we think he was mentally ill. Mm-hmm. Uh, n- no. There's thousands of people that have had these really bad thoughts. You the, can't say yeah. like the Nazi party, the hundreds of thousands of people that helped kill Jews and Catholics and and blacks and, and Muslims and, and anybody with a different religious belief and people with the certain eye colors, different color skin. You can't sit there and tell me all those people were mentally ill. No, not at all. It's their ideology. It's and they were susceptible. Well, I don't even want to say susceptible. Well, susceptible. This is what happens when you drink on a Sunday night, <laughs> Miss you know, Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth. No, it, it's one of those things where I think they, when we're talking about you know, you know, Nazis or whatever, it, there's there's a lot of excuses that people can make, right? Yeah, there's people that were absolutely psychotic and they just enjoyed the power and they enjoyed the suffering that they, they, you know, made people feel. Right. But then you're going to have people who were just were followers that, you know, they just want to be a part of something. You have people that, that did it because, Hey, if, if I don't join this, then they're going to kill me. Right. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to like, when I think it comes to like McVeigh and mass shooters, I think that yeah, part you're gonna have some mental illness, illness in there. I think you if you go and you actually look, you're gonna have you probably find some PS, uh, PTSD. Mm-hmm. You're probably gonna have yeah. I mean, there's there's gonna be a wide a range of reasons why, but I think a lot of times it's gonna come down to issues with the brain, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, you could be. You don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to be crazy to to do some of the stuff, but you could still have some sort of um, chemical imbalance. Yeah, which, which, I think, which I, makes you go out and uh, you know maybe it's blocking some part of your brain that would tell you, wait, what are you doing? This is stupid. But what I'm what I'm scared of right now is our our solution is to pop a pill. You know, go to your doctor and pop a pill. Let's not worry about journaling. Let's not worry about hydration let's not worry about exercise let's not worry about sleep let's not worry about anything let's just pop that pill and i pop the pill is the easy easy answer no but it's not because because those uppers Mm -hmm. one of the biggest side effects is suicide yeah so now you have suicide rates going way out of control and it's because well just pop that pill you weren't suicidal before you just weren't having a good time you weren't dealing with yourself correctly pop the pill now you're suicidal now you kill yourself and it's um again i go it goes back to the whole thing that i thought and it wasn't until like middle school high school okay let me take that back i thought about it a little bit in middle school Mm -hmm. and i probably didn't think about it again until like late junior year early senior year yeah on the idea that we're going into adulthood and this is going to change things Mm -hmm. and I can't wait. I wanted to be an adult. Yeah. I wanted to be responsible. I wanted to have intelligent conversations with people. I wanted to change things. And now I'm 38 years old and I'm looking at 
all this nonsense. Yeah. And, you know, and, and even just like the, the mental health thing, it's, you know, it's like, you know, people go, we don't have a g- gun problem in this country. We've got a mental health problem. It's like, <laughs> but maybe we have yeah. both, you know, maybe we have both. It's po- You and, can. And the, the sad thing is on either side, nobody wants to budge. Yeah. And then, you know, and I, and I, again, I don't want to get too political, but it's, you know, our, the pendulum swings too far. We go from not believing any rape victim to believing every accuser. Okay. Right? Yeah. It's like the pendulum shouldn't swing too far. We have people losing their job. For example, I used to watch Tavis Smiley and then watch Charlie Rose. What Charlie Rose did was inappropriate. Yeah. Wasn't sexual assault, wasn't rape, at least from what I've read. So if there was something that I didn't that I didn't see, I don't want somebody going, Well, I actually heard that he did this. Yeah. From what I know, like he would like do these things where he'd like come out of the shower without his towel. And and Being somebody like walk super creepy. Yeah, that's creepy. That's uh, disrespectful, but that's inappropriate. You can lose your job for that. There was other accusations against Tavis Smiley that I don't think there was much weight to, uh-huh. but because their whole program was like kind of linked together, he lost his job. <laughs> and and I think he ended up trying to sue, which is good because if look, if you get accused of stuff that you didn't do, you should fight tooth and nail to to clear your yeah. name. But most of the time, once your name is thrown under that bus, you're done. Because we're in a society where you can't, as when you're a corporate entity, you can't take a chance, right? Right, but that's that's ridiculous. And also, just as human as humans, mm-hmm. we should we should say maybe we're wrong or maybe we're sorry. And yeah. for example, like with um, there was some allegation. I posted something about James Franco, and, and I got some shit. You know, it was a funny. I posted it because it was funny. I, I didn't post it because of James Franco. And, and I got a bunch of shit for it. And I remember thinking he was accused of a couple things on Twitter. Immediately, those tweets were taken down. Yeah. And then he came out within hours and apologized. And he basically said, if I did anything that made anybody uncomfortable, I am sorry. Yeah. And maybe I was unaware of that. And And Charlie Rose had a good point one time, too, is that some of these things that people get accused of it's actually a man taking a chance, uh, you know. Now, again, I want to be clear. <laughs> you I don't d- take a chance by walking out of a shower butt naked. No, that's not taking a chance. But, you know, maybe yeah. while you're at dinner with somebody, maybe you reach out for their hand. Yeah. You know, and people go, well, maybe you should ask for it first. Well, I guess what is not going to be romantic at all. Do you mind if I hold your hand? You know. I mean, I guess for some people that would work. Right? It sounded a little more romantic when I said it. Yeah. But no, I just, it's sad to me that like we can't be more adults and I don't see more adults. Like it doesn't matter if you're left wing or right wing, we should be able to solve some problems together. But it's almost like everybody's just picked a team and they're like, fuck you, I'm on this team, motherfucker. And, and, and even if my team says some ridiculous shit, I'm going to follow him to my death. and But this brings me to a point. This is my only point for the show. <laughs> okay. The only point. Is I, I I went to watch a show okay. called um, a, a Little Late with Lily Singh. Okay. It is, you have Jimmy Fallon. He does The Tonight Show. And after the Tonight Show is, what is his name? Seth. Oh, uh, Myers. Seth Myers. I don't know what his show is called. I don't watch it that much. I've actually watched a couple of, like, he does these little uh, closer looks. Isn't it just late night? Yeah. And, and But, see, I used to be, I, now look, I used to watch David Letterman, and then I'd flip over to Conan. Mm-hmm. And then after Conan was Jimmy Fallon, and it was great. And now it's Jimmy Fallon, Seth 
Myers, and then Lily Singh. Okay. And Lily Singh is a YouTube comedian, and she is um, biracial. Okay. Um, I, I think she's biracial. I know she's bisexual. She's a female, and she, and her whole thing is that she'll say, "I'm a like a brown woman." Okay. Right? And anyways, I just went, "Oh, cool, a late show." That's all I care about. And her first monologue was so bad, and so racist, and so stereotypical, like. Here's the thing. I I have always been a fan when it comes to late night. I've always been a fan normally of the latest show on TV. The Tonight Show. I liked, I used to love Jimmy Fallon. I think he's okay now. It's a different market, right? Mm-hmm. So I was, I was going, Lily Singh. I don't know much about her. She seems pretty cool. Let's see what's up with this. And, you know, she mentioned multiple times she's bisexual. That's awesome. I have some friends that are. I have some friends that are straight. I have some friends that are gay. Awesome. You know, a couple of bisexual people. This is great. Breaking down barriers. Uh, female. Late night host. That's awesome. Has there been some other ones? Yes, there has. And then, so, but then she started talking shit about all the other hosts being white and male. Yeah. And I just hurts my feelings because it's like what did they do wrong you know what i mean yeah or like what did i do wrong what did i do wrong to anybody that you're now talking shit about people being white and a man like it's not okay for me to be proud that i am a man and and it's not even proud yeah just like somebody that deals with mental illness and and doesn't like themselves too often is now being told that being white is shit and being a man is shit. And it's like, but I I already dislike myself anyways. I was raised Catholic. I got a bunch (laughs) of strikes going against me. Like, can we not just say that every white male is a piece of shit? Because maybe they're not. Yeah. And so, and then she made some jokes about like the Midwest, like being so confused that there was a person of color on their TV. Um. And it was it was cringe. Okay. Now now look, I wasn't going to say anything because I don't. I think this is kind of political. Yeah. And, or maybe not political, but maybe this is stuff that people. It's uncomfortable. Maybe people don't want to talk about this. But I was primarily raised by a black, strong black female. And when I hear these, you know, she's trying to be funny. And she didn't do a good job of it. Yeah. Now, let me t- take a step back. Some of the funniest comedians, Dave Chappelle, Bill Berg. These guys are bringing up racial issues, but it's funny. But this was not funny. This was constantly, I am a, a brown woman. I am a bisexual. I am, you know. She's saying the easy route. Yeah. And then she was making like, oh, Midwestern. So you're probably freaking out. Like, do you know how many fucking channels are on my TV? And do you know how many people of color are, are on the shows that I watch? Yeah. And so let's not assume that the Midwest is a bunch of honkies that don't want to watch your show. And 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 I think um I could be wrong. But uh, it, this really bothered me. So I watched this monologue. It was really bad. It was cringeworthy. And then the first joke was Rain Wilson. And he was giving her as a gift. He's like, oh. She's like, Wait, Rain Wilson, why are you on my show? And he said, I got a special gift for you. Yeah. And it was a white noise machine. All right. But it was like the first noises were like people walking across the thing and she's like what noise is that she goes that's a that's a guy walking in Birkenstocks ordering Starbucks you know what I mean yeah and then like one of the noises was the police like a police siren 
And then the, then the next noise was him talking, and the whole joke was, get it, white noise machine. You know, like, it was just, it was cringeworthy. It wasn't funny. And anyways, I thought, like, I thought maybe, like, maybe I just, like, wasn't in a good mood when I saw this. Yeah. So I ended up YouTube, you know, Googling it and looking at the comments on YouTube, and there were tons of other people that were like, look, nobody gives a shit. If you're a male or female, yeah, we only care if you're funny. We only care if yeah. you're entertaining. Yeah, we don't care what color you are. You could be purple. If you're funny, you're entertaining. We're going to love you. We're going to support you. If you make it inclusive, then we're going to support you, and that means it, inclusive for everybody. Yeah, not just people that are like you. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't know what you call it. I don't want to say that it's racism or reverse racism, which is that, that whole term is stupid, but it's like, you're, you're dogging people for being white and that's not cool. Just like it's not cool for somebody dogging somebody because they're black or brown. Yeah. Man, it, woman. Yeah. Yeah. Or what their sexual pre- preference is. So anyways, I was up the other night flipping through the channels and her show came on and I thought, well, let me give it a second. Cause a lot of the comments was, I know she's a funny person. I know she's a talented person. Mm-hmm. Hopefully she gets over this shit and she doesn't just be one dimensional and yeah. only talk about herself. And, and, and I did listen to a monologue and she didn't make one joke about her sexuality or her skin color. And I went, okay, maybe, Maybe she gets it, but it's just, it's just weird to hear these things sometimes and be like, well, a middle, middle America, middle American white males don't get it. And you're like, are you just lumping me in this group that I don't feel I belong in? Mm -hmm. Like, and also like, and, and are we going to constantly let, look, I think We should love ourselves. I think we should be proud of ourselves. And there's going to be things that we don't like. There's things that we're not going to like about our heritage. Yeah. There's going to be things about ancestors that we don't like. But we should be proud of certain things. And we should be proud of ourselves. We should love ourselves. We should love our differences. And also love why we're the same. Yeah. And I don't understand why there's... There's millions of adults in America, and why can't we just say this is not acceptable? And I'm not saying cancel our show because I think cancel culture is a bunch of bitches. Yeah, because there are, it's the outrage culture, and I'm not. I wasn't outraged. I was Dis- my feelings were you're hurt. disappointed. Yeah, she hurt my feeling. Hurt my feelings. But but then you give her a chance. And I, yeah. I don't want her to be canceled if she can do the job. If because she's funny and she's entertaining and she... Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And if she's inclusive. And the thing is, I almost thought maybe they're just using these jokes and talking this way because if she does get fired, this will be her excuse. They weren't ready. Right. And like that's the thing too. She was like saying how she's paving the way for women. It's like, Here's which the, I understand that it is 2019, almost 2020. It's just not 1950, right? Right. This is not like this is the first time this has ever happened. Okay, well maybe in in that format, late night TV host, right? There's been other late night TV oh, hosts. Oh yeah, that are female. Yeah, but so it's it's not a first. It's not like you're breaking some sort of barrier. Right, and think about daytime TV, for example. I mean, Oprah, she's the mm-hmm. she's the queen mother. Yeah, Ellen, Ellen, gay woman. Yeah, it's just Anderson Cooper. He's gay woman. Gay woman. He's been doing CNN for how long now? <laughs> no, but I don't know. And and look, you know, somebody's going to go wham 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 wham. Yeah, it's a me. No, look, it's just, it's just when I hear that stuff, I feel like that's part of the problem. Yeah, 
and it's the separation and it's like yeah we're a little different but that's okay that's a beautiful thing that we're different because that means we can learn from each other Mm -hmm. and but also like if you're going to be proud of things about yourself then i should be proud too because it's like the straight parade yeah and and I heard a comedian make a joke that like it doesn't matter what kind of parade it is because all parades are gay, <laughs> okay, I <heard> which I think <laughs> is a great joke. But yeah, do I think it's kind of silly? Yeah, it's a little yeah. silly. And the reason why it's a little silly is because these people are trying to make a point, and they're trying to like they're they're also trying to like go well if you if you can have a parade, we can have a parade, and and, th- and they're trying to make a mockery of some of this stuff. Yeah. But I don't think there's anything wrong. Like if you're like, we're having an Irish pride parade. Saint awesome. Pat- St. Patrick's Day. Right. Pretty much St. Patrick's Day. But what I'm saying is like, that's awesome. Yeah. And there's like, you know, I just went to, we have a place in Columbus called a German village mm-hmm. and there's a lot of German heritage and you see German flags and it's like, that's awesome. There's Oktoberfest coming up here, right? Yeah. And like, uh, you'll see like in Dublin, Ohio, which is very Irish. They'll have like the Irish festival and stuff like that. That's great. You know, I have no problem with that. And I don't have a problem with the straight parade. I'm not going to it. It's because it's not going to be fun. It's beyond. It's dumb. It, it is dumb. But what I'm saying is if for some reason, like, okay, what, what would happen though? If we be, if straight people become a minority, then is it then okay to have a parade? When is it okay to have a parade? No. Well, no, I think it's no, okay. I, I think it's okay to have a gay gay pride oh, parade. Oh, no, absolutely. But I also think, but in the same token, then you have to say by default that having a straight pride parade is okay too. But there's a huge difference between a gay pride parade and a straight pride parade, right? Well, you have, look, you yeah, have a, no. you have, you have a group of people for how many years, how many, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. Well, maybe not thousands of years, hundreds of years had to hide who they were. Right. Mm-hmm. Even we're talking, you know, 50 years ago, you know, they had to hide who they were. Yeah. As a straight person, you never had to hide that you were straight ever. Right. No, I understand that. But and I so, but, but so I also the difference think... is so it's not really a it's not a yay, we are we're gay or yay, we're straight. Here we are. It's it is more the fact that you know what? I, I this is who I am and and I am proud of who I am and I'm not gonna hide. No, I understand that. But I think the same could be said for straight people that if they want if they wanted to. I'm not saying they should. I'm mm-hmm. saying if they wanted to to go look if if people are proud of being gay, can I be proud of being yeah. straight? And yeah. Again, that's what I'm saying is if we're adults, right? And mm-hmm. and let's say we go out on the playground. We're all adults. Yep. But we go out to the playground and little Johnny wants to have his straight, you know, straight pride parade. Mm-hmm. Probably just not going to pay attention to it. Yeah. Probably not going to comment on it. Like I'm part of the problem right now because I'm commenting on it. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Like I, I know we just go. I get. But here's what I'm saying is the point is, is 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 they can have it. They can do if they want to do it. They can do it. And and the end of the day, is it going to hurt anyone? Absolutely not. Is right, it silly? Yes, it's silly. But that's the thing is when people then go, well, that's ridiculous. And therefore, if you're at the straight straight pride parade, that means you're racist, and that means that you're. Uh, against gays, you're against bisexuals, you're yeah. against transgender. No, it doesn't mean that. Unless during the straight pride parade, they're going kill all the gays, yeah. kill. All, you know, but they're not. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, we don't. Uh, well, know. I don't know because I didn't go to the damn yeah. parade. But but all, I also think that we're living in this weird time that we're going. Hey, you know. Be proud of who you are. Yeah. If you're different, if you're if you're black, be proud of who you are. If you're if you're Indian, be proud of who you are. If you're Muslim, be proud of who you are. Be proud of your religion. 
but we have to be able to say that to everybody and is, every kid. Let's be honest. The problem is, is there is a group of people who made it wrong to say white pride, right? Some really, really horrible people. Yeah, some people. horrible people. And so I would never, ever, 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 ever go to anything that was like a white pride parade. No, Ever. no, but I'm not. I'm not saying we have a parade. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is those. I don't want little boys and girls of whatever color feeling bad for who they are. No, they should be taught love who you are, be proud of who you are. Mm-hmm. So if a kid that's in third grade was like, you know, uh, here's a, a black kid say black power, and he said white power, <laughs> you, you know, get it asked. Oh you. yeah, well, because but there's bad, you know, there's. <laughs> but what I'm saying is. I want that kid to go, mm-hmm. yeah, black is beautiful. I want the white kid to say black is beautiful and brown is beautiful, but so is white. Yeah. And collectively, we're more beautiful together. Thanks, Michael. And then I also think, no, I'm serious about I know, this. I know, I know. Because like you take, there's a lot of uh, kids that are coming, you know, that there's more biracial kids now than yeah. before, mm-hmm. and they should love all sides. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite people in the world, um, the closest black friend I've ever had, was black Irish. Mm-hmm. And it was insane that when he would talk about his heritage, his heritage was more Irish. And he had a black father, a white mother. And, and he would tell me the importance of loving all sides of himself. And it's just like if you, uh, I've been doing some of this in ancestry stuff and mm-hmm. learning about my heritage and what percentage of the world I come from. And and it's fascinating and it makes me want to learn more about those cultures, but, I, but we should be proud of those things. But also to say, not only am I this, but I'm inclusive and I, I will stick up for anybody because I want us to all be equal. So I know that's a big rant, but uh, <laughs> but it, I just saw this beautiful, strong, talented, funny. I mean, there's there's not enough words to describe this Lily Singh. Of what I heard about her, what I was expecting to see, and just feeling not inclusive. You know, I didn't feel included. That um, and the and and the whole thing and and but did you feel like you weren't welcome to watch? I felt like she was calling me a moron and a racist and a bigot. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And again, cancel you know cancel culture, outrage culture. The next thing I saw was funny, and there was jokes on all ends, and. It was good. And then I thought, well, maybe. Because it was weird. Because it was like hearing our first monologue. I was like, are we just going backwards? But like in a different direction. But then to see her monologue. It's like maybe she got the memo. Maybe she heard that some people were offended. And she went, maybe I don't want to be offensive. And maybe I don't want to exclude anybody that wants to support me. You know, because that's the other thing, too, is sometimes these artists, um, you know, Dave Chappelle talks about it a lot, going and having a sold out concert and the majority of his audience sometimes is white. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, there's a lot of supportive people out there and a lot of different races that are supportive. And, um, And I just don't think we should alienate somebody going, oh, well, the Midwest is just idiots and hillbillies and they don't understand that you know there's a bisexual female on my tv screen oh my god it's like but it's not you know it's not not the 1920s here you know (laughs) like and again i think some it bothers me that we're we're not growing up but okay see we can get serious on the show (laughs) we can get serious (laughs) i'm gonna like go back and listen and just be like what the hell was I talking about? <laughs> what was that? What was the point? How of did this? Matana take us here? Who knows? Why do we even wonder anymore? Like, I don't know. 
we just go down the rabbit hole. Welcome to the Alice in Wonderland. Okay, so if you want to follow us on Instagram, it's the Captain and Morgan show. Just the Captain and Morgan. Oh, it's just the Captain and Morgan. That's right. At the Captain and Morgan. Check out our website. What's our website called? It is CaptainAndMorgan.com. Yes. We thank you for listening. We thank you for being our friends. We like that you went down the rabbit hole with us. Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth. And it doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter. What you believe in. If you're black or white. What color you are. You're welcome here. And we hope that the conversations that we have make you feel welcome. And until next week. Ahoy, <laughs> mahalo. Uh, <laughs> until next week. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> uh, ahoy, mahalo. Ahoy, mahalo. I, I don't even know. <laughs> um, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. Uh, until next. <laughs> here. Uh, uh, until next week. Well, I don't know. I don't know. We got to come up with a good uh, phrase to end it. Quarry. I don't know. Um, How about, here? here's one that's like, you know, because I just went on my little soapbox. We could go, until next week, be good to yourself and be better to others. Wash your balls. <laughs> until next week, <laughs> take a shower. No, you know what? You uh, filthy animal. Be good to each other. That's, uh, yeah, that's good, but, well, you know. How about we just, we'll just steal it from the Beatles. We'll just say, until next week, peace and love. 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 <laughs> yeah, Ringo for like three hours. Peace and love. Peace and love. Peace and love. love. Peace and love. Peace and love. Uh, yeah, okay, so here, uh, till next, <laughs> until next week, put some peach lotion on your skin. It puts the lotion on his skin. Um, until next week, spray some root cologne. <laughs> <laughs> until next week, Listen to Madonna and touch yourself. Um, I don't know. Peace and love kind of sounds cheesy too. It what? does. Be good. To, be good to yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, good job, Nick. Um, be good, be kind. Be good, be kind, and rewind. Um, until next week. No, we say, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the the DeLorean next week. Thanks for listening to Captain and Morgan. If you like the show and want to know more, check out CaptainandMorgan.com. Please also remember to subscribe to Captain and Morgan on YouTube or catch it live on Discord. You can also follow Captain and Morgan on Instagram at the Captain and Morgan or on Twitter at Cap and Morgan. <laughs>